In today's video, we're going to have a very special guest join us, Duncan. Duncan has previous experience as a flight nurse. What really attracted you to this role? The way that they walk into a room, it seems like all eyes were on them. The best advice that I never got is Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Nurse Lissy. In today's video, we're gonna have a very special guest join us, Duncan. Duncan has previous experience as a flight nurse. So we figured it'd be a really fun topic to delve into, especially for those of you that are currently in school and just thinking about some of the various avenues you can pursue as a registered nurse. The cool thing is Duncan and I actually both went through the same nursing program. So we walked the same halls, we shared a lot of the same experiences. And even as we sit here today, we our nursing careers took two very different paths. So that is the beauty of nursing. There are so many fun things that you could do. So Duncan, do you wanna tell us a little bit about your experience and your background? Sure, sure. Thank you so much for having me. Um, so as you described, I, I have been a flight nurse for the last couple of years. Um, the path leading up to that was a little bit of a non-traditional one, I guess you could say. Um, I did work a little while in, uh, in psych and drug and alcohol. Um, and after a couple of years there, decided to go down the critical care route in the ICU, adult ICU. Um, while in the ICU, um, you know, I, I always kind of had dreams of flying, which I'm sure we'll talk a little bit more yeah. about later. But, um, you know, the avenue to, to get there required some pre-hospital experience as well. Sure. Um, so I did spend about a year uh, working on the trucks with the paramedics as a yeah. pre-hospital registered nurse um, just to get that experience that, you know, you should uh, to fly. So three years, three and a half years in ICU with one year pre-hospitally. And then um, that kind of led me to the path of being able to fly. OK, so Duncan, you mentioned that you always felt like you might eventually be a flight nurse. Tell me more about that. What really attracted you to this role? Well, uh, to answer that question, I got to go back a little bit. Um, so when I first started in the medical career, medical field rather, uh, I was in the emergency room as a tech. Um, and a lot of what flight nurses do is take sick patients from a smaller hospital to a tertiary care facility uh, and the, the local rural hospital that I worked at was a perfect setup, you know, to run into flight nurses um, that would fly patients that maybe this rural hospital wasn't quite capable of taking care of. Okay. So they need a higher level of care. But in being a technician in that emergency room, um, I interacted with them quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one of the first things that drew me to them was the the way that they walk into a room and every single head in that place, whether it be a nurse, a physician, uh, an x-ray tech, a phlebotomist, mm -hmm. it seems like all eyes were on them, you Absolutely. know, and they, they have, they have a kind of respect, a kind of aura, um, when they enter a room. So that, that was the first thing, right? Immediately. I'm like, who are these people? What do they do? Yeah. Um, and so it was a far off dream. I didn't know really what it entailed back then. I just knew like, wow, these guys in these suits, and mm -hmm. I, I want to be that. I want to know more about that. So that was the initial attraction. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, I would totally agree with you. Having worked in PICU, there, there is the, this presence when the Life Flight team arrives with the patient. And there is that res that unspoken respect. If, mm. if you haven't seen it yet as a student, if you're lucky enough to be in an ICU setting or an ER setting, like pay attention to that because it definitely like it's something that it it draws you in and you're just like, wow, mm. I, I totally get that. So that's really neat. Mm. Um, so tell our viewers when you kind when you had that idea that you wanted to pursue this flight nurse um, path, what steps did you take to get there? What kind of training are you going to need? What, what could we tell our students out there? Great question. Um, the, the first requirement uh, by most flight organizations is critical care. Mm -hmm. They define critical care as ICU or emergency room. Okay. Um, now, PICU, NICU, areas like that, I think that they would be considered depending on the flight organization. Um, but, a, you know, a general adult ICU, uh, somewhere where you are taking care of 
you're managing sick patients longer term. Mm -hmm. um, you're dealing with central lines. You're dealing with arterial lines. You're dealing with Swan Gans catheters. Um, you know, you're dealing with titrating vasopressors, things like that. Um, you know, the critical environment. Mm -hmm. Emergency room, as I mentioned, is another option. Um, the second thing requirement around here would be to be certified in your field. Okay. Uh, so certifications for adult ICU and I believe pediatric ICU are the CCRN. Correct. Um, and then the CEN would be the certification for the emergency room. They like three years experience in one of those places. That's usually a minimum. I have seen some places that require five. Okay. Um, so, you know, a pretty solid foundation uh, in one of those departments. The other thing is, and I mentioned earlier, um, the pre-hospital experience. Yeah. So part of the job, about 15% in our area is what we would call scene calls. Mm -hmm. What that means is, you know, you're landing on a highway, you're landing in a football field, you're landing, you know, at, at a landing zone that's unapproved to meet pre-hospital providers sure. outside of a hospital environment. Um, the pre-hospital experience is paramount for mm -hmm. nurses for this reason. You need to understand the protocols. You need to understand what, what the paramedics can do uh, legally, what, what they could have done before you get there, and then what you can do as an adjunct to what they've done um, to safely take care of your patients. So the pre-hospital experience, the critical care experience, um, and certifications that that's the requirements and i would think um duncan you know you can speak to this this is your background but that critical care experience is so foundational in you being able to come in as the flight nurse and take charge of the situation um and really organize everything around you very rapidly and i, I would think you you know you i can't even imagine um having not been in your role what that experience is like but how could you do that? You, you wouldn't be able to do that without that ICU experience. So I, I get it, like why that is such a requirement, whether it is the three years or the five years, totally makes sense. Yeah. Um, what exactly was your training like? You know, you know we, we've both, both been in the position as a new grad when you're being precepted to a unit, totally different than being a flight nurse. So tell us what that looked like for you. Yeah, that's well put. I mean, totally, totally different. Uh, the orientation process, first of all, is, is a lot longer, which mm -hmm. is great. Um, we did 16 weeks, I believe it was 16 weeks where you were buddied up with a preceptor. Mm -hmm. um, during that 16 week period, uh, it was very organized. I mean, by, by body system, by category, um, and all of the protocols for the state and for our specific organization uh, were organized within body systems. So we would go through, you know, everything, neuro, respiratory, cardiac, you know, you name it. Yeah. Um, after the 16 weeks, there was a, what, we, what, what should I call it? It was a skill checkoff day, right? A, a, a simulation day okay. with the medical directors um, where they would give you a scenario and you would have to apply a state protocol and or, you know, a a system protocol and execute, you know, what you should do to take care of that patient for that scenario to prove to them that you're progressing where they want you to be. At that point, then they put you on this list. It's called the green list. So for a period of a year, you're on a green list. And what that means is you're only flying with experienced providers. Okay. Two green list members should not be flying together ever. And that's the way that, you know, they, they extend the orientation process really, right? Yeah, yeah. It, it's a step down over a year's time where you're, you're continuously evaluated mm -hmm. um, to make sure that you're meeting the marks and providing at the high level that they expect. At the year mark, there's another simulation. Um, it's called Education Day. So you go in, there's stations, you go through all of the skills, mm -hmm. um, which there's a lot more skills, a lot, a lot of things that you are able to do as a flight nurse or flight paramedic that you're not in the regular role. Um, so you go through all of the stations with a, with one of the experienced providers, and then you have another simulation. Um, very much like the same one, a little more complicated, you know, yeah. they, they want to test your skills to make sure that you can get off of this list. At this point in a year's time, 
they know you, right? Mm -hmm. They've talked to you. You've talked to medical directors yeah. a lot. You've flown with a lot of these people. Mm -hmm. So they know, you know, at that point, if you're ready or not to be off of that list. Um, and then, you know, that, that's kind of the orientation process. So. I, I love that little glimpse because it is so different than what we know as inpatient orientation and precepting new grads and orienting people to the unit. I think we both have probably seen in our professional experience where you have people coming off orientation. Sometimes you're walking into a unit and it's primarily new grads or inexperienced nurses and you kind of worry a little bit. Like I know I've been in that situation. Yeah. How about you? Oh, yes. Um, so it, it helps to hear your training um, to be a flight nurse is rock solid. And it has to be, you know, obviously the caliber of the job and what you're doing for your patients. So I think that's really neat to hear that side of it. And again, like all going back to why you need that foundational critical care experience prior to ever becoming a flight nurse. Yeah. So that's really awesome. Um, what can you tell our viewers what a typical day in the life would be like for you? I realize every shift was probably drastically different than the next, but tell us about, you know, what, what was a typical day? Like typical day. So this is one of the, one of the things that make this job hard. I would say, mm -hmm. um, it, it's not like the adult ICU or the pediatric ICU or even the emergency department where you're walking in and you know that you're going to work. You know that you're going to have patients all day. You're going to stay fresh with all these drips. You're going to be putting in IVs multiple times that day, <laughs> practicing your skills. Um, that's, this is an area where this job, it's a challenge. Mm -hmm. Some days we don't get flights, mm -hmm. you know? Some days we get four or five flights, yeah. you know, that four to five flights is considered a busy day mm -hmm. uh, for us. And, and it's, you know, picking a patient up, time at the bedside, preparing them for flight, for transport, mm -hmm. you know, in one mode or another, um, you know, packaging them up, safely putting them in the aircraft or the ambulance, sure. and then transport time, dropping them off bedside time again, mm -hmm. making sure everything's all good. And they're, they've, uh, the receiving facilities assumed care. Nobody has any questions. Everything mm -hmm. stayed the same. And then flight time back to base. Yeah, so I, I forgot, I forgot all about that traveling right, back and right, forth. Right. Right. And flight time would be the shorter one. So, you know, on bad weather days, we're not flying. Mm -hmm. You're going by ambulance. Yeah. So same sort of thing, right? The transport time to and from adds a lot, the bedside time there and drop off. So, you know, you think about four or five of those, Five would be probably the most I've ever done. Four, three to four is a typical busy day. Um, but yeah, you think about that much time for all those transports. That's a long day. That's a shift. That's, that is, wow. Yeah, that's a shift. <laughs> On those busy days. Yep. That is crazy. Yeah. Um, how, you know, how many days do you work, would you have worked in a row when you? So for my, day? for the, the organization that I came from, it's very much like the inpatient hospital. Okay. Um, we do 12 hour shifts, the three twelves, mm -hmm. you know, the typical um, the difference, the big difference for me was the rotation. So mm -hmm. some facilities around here, and I'm sure facilities nationwide believe in the 50, 50 rotation, especially when you're new, um, with flight, with the organization that I worked for everybody, no matter how much experience that you have rotates. Mm -hmm. So you oh, do wow. half days, half nights, okay. and that's the way that it is. Mm -hmm. Um, so 12s rotating schedule. Mm -hmm. Kind of tough. So Duncan, let's talk about some pros and cons to the role of being a flight nurse. If we're being honest, we all know as nurses and just human beings, every job has pros and cons. So let's hit some of the top um, things that you absolutely loved about this position that you could share with our viewers today. Sure, sure. Um, the adrenaline. If, if you are somebody that loves fast pace, you know, adrenaline pumping situations, this is a job for you. Mm -hmm. um, now, that being said, there's a lot of lows as well. It's, it's yeah. a big contrast. So when it's time to go to work, you're jumping in a helicopter and you're flying yeah. there, right? Yeah. Which, I mean, that's the coolest thing in the world. I still look at helicopters in the sky and I'm like, oh man, that's cool, you yeah. know? So jumping in the helicopter. Um, the other thing, my favorite pro of this job there are days when I really feel like we made a difference. Mm -hmm. You know, there are days when you show up to a scene or you show up to a hospital and the patient needs you, the physician needs you, the paramedic needs you, 
the bedside nurse needs you. Mm -hmm. Everybody there is like, oh, thank God you're there, you know? Yeah. And the cases where a patient really, really needed, and it was a time-sensitive matter, mm -hmm. and we were there, you know, and able to provide care that otherwise, you know, would not have happened, that, that's a great feeling, you know? Yeah. As somebody who loves healthcare, as somebody who, who wants to care for people and make a difference, there's no better feeling. That's awesome. And I think at the core, I mean, that's probably why most of us became nurses. You want to be the person to be there to help people at, you know, at the worst moment, the highest of highs, the lowest of lows. And I think sometimes in some of the hospital environments today and staffing shortages, you, you get lost in the shuffle where you've kind of lost that passion and that love. And maybe you don't, you kind of feel like you're going through the motions. So I think it's awesome to hear that you, you, still had those experience that that you could totally change somebody's life around um, and be the person like you said that everybody needed like your role is vital to getting them through to the next steps of recovery or whatever it may be so that's that's awesome yeah what would you say is is the hardest part of this job oh man um i'm sure there's many <laughs> so this this will be this will be appropriate for you and your experience too but kids you know, it, I think that's the hardest part of the job by totally. far, you know, um, coming from an adult environment, mm -hmm. it was always something that I was nervous about. And I think anybody that works in an adult ICU <laughs> or, you know, emergency room, not so much, but an adult ICU, yeah. you go and you say to them, I need you to take care of this sick kid. I'm like, oh no, hands off. Yeah. Hands somebody, off. somebody who's really, really good at staying mm -hmm. calm in emergent situations goes, oh no. Oh, no way, you know? <laughs> yeah. So getting over that hump is is hard. Um, I couldn't agree more, Duncan. Even obviously peds is my background. I'm afraid of adults, if I'm being quite honest. But there is something to be said. And even with all that background and experience, it's hard. It doesn't matter how prepared you are to see a sick kid. It's just, it's something difficult. Um, and then to see their family and all the components to that. I would think that your time in the ER really helped though, not necessarily increase that confidence because it still is, it's just hard when we see sick kids, but you were exposed to sick kids being um, in that tech role, correct? Yes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, and drawing blood on those kids and conscious sedations sure. and, and navigating, you know, family dynamics with kids, which you touched on. That's huge. <sighs> so you big. Know, so it, big. When they're sick, when they're critically ill, you know, the kids that you're used to with PICU mm -hmm. and some of the kids that I flew, um, yeah, I mean, it's, there's nothing that you can say to comfort a parent in that situation. No, no and there's you, nothing. You could not have said it better. Like you have to really be prepared as the nurse for everything. That's just completely unpredictable. Right. Um, the personalities that are going to come out and rightfully so. Yeah. So, um, what advice could you give to students that might be watching this might be thinking about, you know, maybe in five years from now, this is, this is definitely a goal of mine or a dream of mine. What kind of advice could you give them? The best advice that I never got is to slow down. You know, it's mm -hmm. great to have these goals. It's great to have long-term goals, um, but don't wish away days. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Get the experience that you need in the ICU. Be present. Learn mm -hmm. as much as you can. Don't don't look at it as oh, I just got to do this to get to the next thing. You know, and just yeah. kind of do the bare minimum to get through, because. The more that you learn and the more that you, you can apply the knowledge that you learned, the better flight nurse that you're going to be, Absolutely. right? Because you need, so talk to the respiratory therapist, ask them questions about vent settings. I mean, annoy them. Talk to the intensivist, uh, talk to your PAs, your mid-levels, talk to experienced nurses, get as much as you can in a shift. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I love to tell new grads to get a journal. And things that you don't know during the day, write it down. You know, if you, because who has time to look things up, right? Exactly. In a busy exactly. day's time. <laughs> but if you go home and, you know, you, you saw a patient or your neighbor had a patient with malignant hyperthermia, mm -hmm. right? And that's something that some nurses have gone their whole career without taking care of. Exactly. You know, write that down. Go home. Look it up. Um, you know, familiarize yourself with what is the disease process? What does treatment look like? Um, the next thing, I mean, we've talked about quite a bit in the interview, but diversify yourself, mm -hmm. right? If you only have adult ICU experience, the minimum going mm -hmm. into, or, or ER experience going into a job like this, you're hurting yourself. I know plenty of good providers that 
did you know the minimum to get their certification and they're fantastic yeah but i'll tell you what i am comfortable stepping into an in, into an ambulance mm -hmm. i know where they keep things i know how to turn the oxygen on i know you know mm -hmm. things like that um you know and how paramedics think using their state protocols things like that just little nuances that otherwise i wouldn't know mm -hmm. i think will help you provide better care so you touched on being present and Truer words could not be spoken to our students that might be watching this or to any new nurse or even experienced nurse, because I'm sure we could both agree. We can definitely tell those people that are just going through the motions that are not present. And they're literally checking the box, trying to get that experience just to move into the next thing. And we know our, we, we see it, you know, your patients see it, mm. um, your colleagues, their family. And I, I love that advice. And I think for any nursing role, not just, for those that might potentially go into a flight nurse role, be present is so, so important. And I think that's probably one of the things that's lacking so much from the bedside that we see today, yeah. um, that lack of presence. I would agree. Yeah. So um, as we wrap up our interview, the really cool thing, so Duncan was able to share with us his experience as a flight nurse, but you're now starting a new venture. So do you want to, we talked a little bit right before we started filming this about the next what the next chapter looks like for you do you want to share that with our viewers and your thoughts on education sure sure yeah so lizzie and i were talking and you know uh the education bug got me you know i as a nurse um this has changed my whole life but i've become addicted to growth i've become addicted to learning mm -hmm. and um you know even when i tell myself and my colleagues this is it this is it i'm gonna hang out for a little while i'm gonna be comfortable here i just can't there's something in me <laughs> that wants to continue to grow and to learn and to be a better provider in this process. And, you know, that is a beautiful thing about medicine, period. Mm -hmm. It's it's always evolving. It's always changing. Um, you know, the the term evidence based, you know, is is a moving target, sure. as many of us know. Um, but recently, uh, I decided that I wanted to go on with my education into a DNP program for a nurse anesthetist. So awesome. The requirement for that was to go back to the bedside and ICU. Um, and, you know, I didn't know how I'd feel about it at first, yeah. you know, spending all this time and work that we just spent this interview talking about to get into flight to go back. Um, but I'll tell you what, man, I feel like I'm coming home. That's you know, I, I, I enjoy the bedside. I enjoy advocating for patients in that way. I enjoy mm -hmm. caring for their families, you know, and, and I forgot about that for a little while. Yeah. You know, flight is so exciting and glamorous and, and all those things. Um, but the foundation of where I started, you know, mm -hmm. it, it was nice to come back to. Um, so I'm currently back in the adult ICU where I got my experience um, with plans to hopefully get into CRNA school. Uh, I've applied to a program and um, I was selected for an interview. So we have an interview coming up. Congrats. And, yeah. So and, exciting. Right. It is. It is. And we'll see what happens. But, you know. I talked about being present, you know, before this question, and this is the area of my life where I've learned to mm -hmm. use that, you know, most other things that I've wanted to do as a nurse, I've really tried to control. I've tried to make sure that I'm getting everything done, you know, and, and wishing it into action and doing oh, all that yeah, stuff, yeah. you know, and becoming obsessed. The checkbox. Yeah. And this, this last venture. I'm okay with where I'm at, you know, mm -hmm. I absolutely have goals and I'm excited and I hope that it happens, but I'm taking the approach of just kind of letting it happen. Right. I love that. I've spent this time preparing myself. I've done all the things that I should do, um, thus far. And now it's just, I'm just, I'm smelling the roses for a little while. You know, I think that's been probably really helpful to our viewers to hear. And you're, you know, we are, we hear about this all the time in school. We are lifelong learners and truer words cannot be spoken. Like you never stop learning because as you said, medicine is forever evolving. So I think that's a great stopping point. Um, thank you so much for being here and for sharing your experience with our students. Um, thank you all for watching this video. Be sure to hit subscribe so you never miss one of my uploads and thanks so much for watching. Bye. Thanks for having me.